On this sheet, we're going to do a little practice of the calculation manually. So we're going to fill in the blanks in the first two rows. Then next, I'll show you how to input all the Excel formulas. Notice that in, in these three cells, we have some reminders here that tell us how to calculate the numbers. Now here, we're trying the replenishment level of 100 units and the demand happened to be 76 in the first month. Remember the sales is the smaller number between D and Q, so obviously well, we should have 76 here. The inventory is what's left over, and remember that's Q minus sales, so we had 100, so we sold 76, 100 minus 76 is 24. And now sh the shortage is zero because we have inventory. Now here I have Sell set up for the three different terms, gross profit holding cost and shortage cost. So here we just multiply by the appropriate dollar amount. Uh, gross profit is $50 times the sales. So it's 50 times 76 is equal to 3,800. And then holding cost is 15 times inventory. So it's 15 times 24 is 360. Shortage cost is of course zero because there was no shortage. And the net profit is 3,800 minus 360 minus 0 is 3,440. In the second month, you see that the demand was 125 exceeding the replenishment level. So the sales will be again the smaller of the 200. The inventory will be nothing since demand exceeded the supply. And then shortage will be 125 minus 100. 25, so that was the number of units short. Gross profit is 50 times the sales, 100, 5,000. Holding cost, 15 times, well, zero is zero. And shortage cost is 30 times 25 is 750. So we have here 5,000 minus zero minus 750 is equal to 4,250. So here, by manual calculation, we got 3440 and 4250. Now, in the next sheet, we could see the results from the Excel calculation. So here, we have 3447 and 4258. You could see the numbers are slightly different from the ones obtained from the Excel calculation. But that's because of the round-off errors. When we, when we did the manual calculation, we used the rounded numbers uh, that were shown uh, here, like the uh, like the demand of 76 and 125, but these are actually decimal numbers. And you could see that if these have all these decimal digits that we didn't take into account because what was displayed was the rounded values. Now we'll go on to the next sheet and actually learn how to do all this with Excel. To demonstrate all the steps, I'm going to delete all the calculations and do them all over. So delete those those, and here, and here. Here you could see we have 100 months of simulation. And as before, I've shown only the first five and the last five months for easy navigation. I just copied and pasted the formula for the profit calculation as a reminder. OK, are you ready? OK, first, the demand as normal distribution. We've done this before. We use the norm.inv function, random number for probability, and then the mean, dollar signs, comma, standard deviation, dollar signs. Close the parentheses. What we'll do is we'll fit in the entire first row and then just copy everything down to the rest of the rows. Sales is smaller between the demand and the replenishment level, Q. And we need dollar signs for that because we're going to copy it down and we want the reference to Q to remain fixed. Now the inventory was Q minus sales. So it's Q dollar sign minus the sales, the cell right next to it. Okay, then the shortage was D minus sales, demand minus sales, gross profit was $50, dollar signs, times 
sales, then holding cost, $15, dollar signs, times the inventory, then shortage cost was $30 times the shortage. The net profit is the column 7 minus column 8 minus column 9. So the gross profit minus the two kinds of costs. Minus and minus the shortage cost. Okay, so that's it for the simulation formulas. Now we choose the the cells we just filled in. And then we're just we could just go to the bottom right here and double click to automatically fill in the rest of the simulation table. This way we have simulated net profits for 100 months. Now we need to summarize the profit values and come up with things like the average net profit and the service level and so forth. Since we'll be referring to the column of net profits frequently, I'm going to name them. So I'm going to highlight the all 100 numbers and go over to the name box and uh, give it a name. Let's say profit and hit enter. Now we'll go over and start filling in the summary statistics. Number of trials, 100. Mean profit should be average. Okay, that's 41.22 mean profit. Standard deviation, stdv.s of the, again, the profit, 735. Minimum, smallest was 1361. The largest profit was 49.76. Now the service level is the fraction of the demand that was satisfied. So it will be a ratio between the sales and the demand. The total sales represents the amount of demand that was satisfied. And that divided by total demand will give us the fraction of the demand that was satisfied. Now here we have demand in the sales column, so we just have to get the column sums. Okay, and then let's just copy this over. Okay, so here we could say the service level was 89.89 divided by 97.27. Let's put that in. 89.89 divided by 97.27. 92.4% was the service level. Another thing people are concerned with is the probability of stockout. By probability of stockout, we mean the probability of having some kind of shortage. So the question is, in what percentage of the month did we run out before the end of the month? So to, to get this probability, we first need to count how many months had positive shortage and then divide by number of trials, 100. So first, the number of stockouts. Here we need to see the shortage column and count how many numbers there were positive. Of course, we could see that you got one, two, three, four, five numbers that were positive, but then there's all these hidden rows we need to take into account. So we're going to use the count if function for this. Count if the shortage column, then double quotes greater than zero for the condition. Okay, and if I hit enter, it says I have 42 positive values in the shortage column. So that is out of 100 months, in 42 of those months, there was some kind of shortage. And here, of course, we would just divide 42 by 100 to get 42%. So we have done parts A and B. We calculated the average monthly net profit for the Q value of 100 and also the service level. Now we would like to find the best replenishment level the one that maximizes monthly net profit with at least 95% service level. Now, does the Q of 100 give you at least 95% service level? Let's see. Oh, no, it's only 92.4%, uh, which tells me I should try some higher Q values because the more we order, the higher the service level will be.
and I got it all set up right here. So you got the 100, 110, 120, and so forth. To fill in this table, okay, the basic way might be uh, just try plugging different numbers and record the results here. Like for instance, here I have 41.22 for the mean profit. Service level is 92.4%. And then 110, I go back over here and put in 110. And then observe what numbers we got in the bottom. I got here 42.96 and 95.9%. And I could see that, oh, this is better. This is meeting the service level requirement of at least 95%, and the profit is higher. And now I could try 120 and put it in here and so forth. But uh, you have learned before that there's a faster way of doing this. So let's use the faster way of getting Excel to automatically fill in this table for us using the data table feature. Here, now here are the instructions. We have the Q values we want to try here. And it's important to leave a blank space right here. And then here, we put in the cell addresses for the results. So for the mean profit, we say equal to this cell, J121. And the service level is over here in cell J125. And now we highlight the entire table area starting with that blank cell in the corner and go over to data what if analysis and then the data table and here you might recall that you will leave the first cell blank because the input values we want to try are in the form of a column so don't do the row one go to the column one column input cell and here we tell Excel which cell should receive these values. So we just need to point to the cell that contains the Q value in our model and then say, OK. And let's go check in the bottom. There we go. So here we have the results from trying different Q values. So what is the best Q value in this table? Well, let's see. We know that this one is out. This one has service level too low. Too low. Now, let's look at the other ones. So these all satisfy the condition of having at least 95% service level. And out of those, the mean profit is highest over here at Q value of 120. So we would say this is our optimal replenishment level. And you could see the pattern of the mean profit going up and then down. Uh, so you could be sure that 120 is a the best one. But if the numbers here kept increasing, uh, then you might want to try uh, larger values to see where the peak is.